like it, this ain't gonna be like a full-fledged review. This is just kind of a quick ramble about my experience with the series. Also, I just got my hair retwisted, so I wanted to record this while I still look pretty. So yeah, I just read the fifth and final installment of TMNT The Last Rona, and holy shit was this dark. But we've had some twisted times in the turtle lore before, so that's nothing new. Like there was that previous series a couple years back where they bashed Donnie Shellen and just left him in a coma till the finale. I haven't seen the most recent show, but I know the CGI when they stabbed the shit out of Splinter. Twice. Then there was that suicidal Triceratops in the 2003 series, which was honestly kind of sad, because he was never actually their friend. He had just suffered so much brain damage on Earth, he forgot he considered them enemies. Then there's that Dark Days of Future Past episode, which honestly, this comic series kind of reminded me of. Raph lost an eye, Leo lost both, Mikey lost an arm, Casey and Splinter lost their lives off screen, and then in the third act, they just kill off everyone horrifically. Hunter and Stockman get stepped on, Karai kills Leo, then kills Raph. Saddest death of all goes to Michelangelo, who just died crying out for help and no one answers. April kills Karai, don't bring a don't bring a sword to a bazooka fight, and Shredder gets shredded. However, in this series, I was not expect. first off, skip to whatever timestamp I'm gonna put here to avoid all the gritty details if you wanna read this for yourself. In this series, I was not expecting to see Raph get stabbed in the throat, Leo and Casey get killed off in a bombing, and then Donatello, who had the saddest and just most hilarious death out of everyone in the entire cast. Splinter finding out his other three sons are dead, and then screaming, I have nothing left to live for when Donatello is standing right there, <laughs> like 10 feet away. And then, like, the next page, Donnie takes an entire army full of arrows for this man, which clearly didn't work because they just reloaded and shot Splinter to death, too. They both take their last breaths off screen, and that's pretty much it for them. Funny to me, but still tragic. The setting for it is kind of this post-semi-apocalyptic future Foot Clan run world. And I kind of like how the Ronin, who I will just refer to as such for the remainder of this video to avoid spoilers, kind of kept this just dark, gritty, I don't need anyone, I don't have anyone, suicide mission tone throughout all five installments and with the reveal of who the ronin is and throughout the series he kind of lives up to what's been said through like all turtle lore before which is hey if this person was more serious took their studies more serious and was more focused they actually could be the best of the four and it's kind of like seeing that come to fruition after what has at least been two decades of me watching this type of stuff but then you throw in the trauma factor where even after the reveal it's not like they're just like this happy-go-lucky person again or when they rediscover certain people are still living they revert back to normal they still keep that same dark tone they're still walking around in this dark colored gritty ninja outfit they don't just switch back to their bright happy colored headband and the fact that who the ronin is he isn't just good with the one weapon that he's always assigned to in every turtle series ever he's actually carrying around all four of the brothers weapons and is equally skilled with all four of them his ability to effortlessly switch up his combat style and switch between nunchucks sword sigh or even bow staff without even a moment's hesitation and still carry on a fight flawlessly and then you throw in the trauma fact of him having these season five samurai jack-esque arguments with the ghost of his dead brothers either criticizing him or each other in a way that makes you question if these are all hallucinations in his mind or if they're actually really there and then there's the fact that the ronin is an adult but when he imagines or his brothers come to visit him they show up how he last saw each of them before they died, which is still the colorful headband wearing teenagers they were before each of them passed. Speaking of adult, I do kind of like that they address that with almost every installation we've seen in this series. It's always been Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We've never really questioned what they would be like when they're not teenagers anymore. And with that, they kind of address it through the mutagen, kind of explaining that it's not just a one-time thing that transforms a living organism. The mutagen continues to mutate the older the exposed person gets. Hence why the Ronin is bigger, faster, stronger, and can recover quicker from even more dangerous injuries he sustained when he was a teenager. Also explaining that the mutagen is kind of contagious in this version of the series. Not so much in a negative way, but it basically if you have an overexposure to it from someone who has been completely contaminated by it, it can affect you and your DNA. Which is shown from April in this series and how she was able to survive the things that she did and shown through her child who also has enhanced abilities and is bigger, faster, stronger, and tougher than most people her age. And with this series only having five installments, the pacing didn't feel too bad either. Book one is the reveal of the Ronin. Two through four, we get the death of one brother, a piece, and a side character. Book five, face off the big bad. And it doesn't sound like a large window to fit in a full story, but they actually managed to do a good job with it. Even managing to put in a lot of callbacks without making it feel cramped in there, they all, everything is placed very nicely. Even doing a lot of callbacks to characters like Stockman, the Fugitoid, Casey, which the final one shows up in the form of the Ronin finally getting his revenge filled 1v1 versus the Big Bad. They square off, the Ronin is carrying all four of the brothers' weapons, and when he lands a devastating blow with each one, 
says who the weapon belongs to and who that revenge is for. Overall, I'm not even a comic guy like that, but I've thoroughly enjoyed this story. The releases could have been a little bit closer together. That would have been nice. But if you are a comic person and you're looking for something new to read, I would highly recommend this. All five books are out. However, if you are jumping in this late in the game, good luck getting a variant copy. And I don't know how many times they're going to reboot this series, which apparently they're, they're still doing it. But if there was ever a grittier, darker, more adult series that should definitely be animated or turned into some kind of cartoon anime, it's this one. Alright, that's it for me. I gotta go wrap my head. Happy Monday.